Hello everybody, this is Zach Linton checking in from Managua in Nicaragua. Today is the 17th of August and we have officially concluded the uh, mission, the first half of the overall Central America mission here in Nicaragua. I'm with uh, Ramon Garcia, my translator and uh, just my dear friend in the Lord. And so we just want to give you this update. We had posted a video update about halfway through the journey from Camuapa which covered the first week or so. And so we're gonna talk now about uh, Esteli, uh, Somoto, and Acopal. So that made up the second week. Uh, Ramon, why don't you share a few of your thoughts about Esteli, those three days, a couple of the miracles, and just anything that stands out to you about that first part. Yeah, so hi everyone, Ramon Garcia here with my friend and Lord, Zach Linton. In Esteli, it was, you know, very amazingly, and I'm just going to tell the, some of the miracles that just highlight the most for me, and one of them is the miracle of unity that took place there in that place with the pastors, because we saw that, that uh, thing, that, you know, that division that was taking place there in Esteli, and once uh, Zach brought this powerful message on the unity, even me, myself, I was really literally feeling as the power of the Lord was flowing through me towards that because the Lord really meant that message to be preached on that uh, pastor's gathering and on and, and that uh, conference we had with pastors. And they really, you know, there, there was a shift during the atmosphere. I could sense it there and the pastors afterwards, they were so blessed and very happy with, you know, the coming of Zach Linton there. And even among themselves, I could see that gleeful expression on their faces and yes i know that revival is going to take place after that mm -hmm. union with the pastors and mm -hmm. zach also encouraged those pastors who had more to share with those who had less and there were many pastors there having a lot and the ministry you know materials and building and having all these dreams and building that place there but there were also other pastors in the outer square places or in communities that they needed more of these other pastors helping and the Holy Spirit just went there and convinced them and to go after the souls as, as well and yes and the miracles I mean if I would just tell you all the miracles I would have like 20 miracles that just stand out here for me you know that highlights 20 miracles but there are many others as you know seeing many bags you know healed and but this one this this miracle you know and specifically like this guy you know had his accident and he just, you know, showed us, uh, he had his car accident, he showed us his chest that was caved in, and he literally heard, you know, that sound on his inside, he came and explained to us, like, like if I stayed, it was just, you know, sounding on his side, you know, uh, clenching him and just bringing his part back into normal, so I saw there, uh, I witnessed a creative miracle in Estalia, and mm -hmm. that just stirred the people's faith, and, uh, you know, I just posted on Facebook that picture specifically, and afterwards, people were writing me, you know, when it's going to come here or some auto, and telling to come over to pray for us. And I was just giving all that information. And that, that was one of the miracles, you know, that really um, touched me very deeply. And uh, the sharing of love, you know, how much love, how much God loves his people and he wants to see them all healed and, and to be, you know, doing what he has sent us to do, to go preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And yes, yeah, many, you know, some people, uh, even when we went to restaurants, uh, people would just say, okay, we'll, they would hear us talk about the, the miracles and this and that, and they would just come up and say, you know, we had this, you remember, Zach, this guy that went to that Papi Songo place, that his, his, his friend, his cousin, I think it was his cousin, right? Yeah. Was very sick in Manawa, and he had an accident, and he heard of, you know, the miracles, and we just prayed there for him right on the spot. His mom, you know, had... Uh, what is a Christian woman and he was just a little bit I think backslidden from the Lord and that was the perfect time for him you know to recognize the power of the Lord that I was being there that Zach was passing by the town you know so they just would call him to go and pray and just on the, even on the phones you know please pray for this person and those things really uh, stayed here in my heart and to you know, stir me to, to want more of this. And at the beginning of this uh, crusade, uh, we had a Zoom conference with Zach. I said that we have the word, you know, we have this, but we need the move of the Holy Spirit. We needed that breakthrough. And I believe that this has really taken place in this mission. And I mean, personally, and my wife are all so encouraged and wanting more of God and just continue seeing this revival. And we are expecting that revival that is going to take place 
in a stele because that was has the center, you know, the heart, the core of that group of Africa is going to spread uh, through all of Nicaragua. And Amen. yes. Yeah, so uh, Esteli was a new region that I had not been to in either of my previous visits to Nicaragua. Uh, it's one of the most populous, one of probably the two or three most populous uh, areas of Nicaragua. So it was very exciting to see the pastors come together. I felt very well received there. Uh, one of the pastors was named Pastor Ulysses from Tabernáculo Baraca. 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 And uh, we had a, an amazing night there. That was the first night of the crusade. Second night, we were at a church called La Hermosa, and right in the center of the town, big, beautiful church, lots of people. And then the third night, we were at uh, Pastor Irwin's church at the Sipa church. And so, um, Tabernacle, Tabernaculo Baraca, um, the thing that really stood out to me about that night was just such an atmosphere of worship. That that church really, truly has an anointing for worship. There were all these beautiful young uh, girls doing on their dance uh, dance team, just dancing to the Lord, and and you could just feel the presence of God so tangibly in that place. And um, there were a number of miracles that night. One uh, that stands out to me is that there was a woman uh, with a pain in her leg. You know, constant, persistent pain that you know give her trouble walking and anytime she moved she would feel it and I remember just taking her by the hand uh, in front of you know in the healing line there at the altar as people were coming forward to receive a healing and we just walked back and forth on the stage and, and I just said you know in Jesus name walk in Jesus name you are being healed right now and by the time she went to one side and then the other she just paused and just broke down weeping because she literally had received a, mir a miraculous healing from the Holy Spirit uh, right there on the spot and so it's just a beautiful absolutely beautiful thing and um, so that was our first night the second night at Hermosa Church um, the testimony that Ramon shared with you as I was preaching and just kind of waiting on the Holy Spirit the Lord gave me a vision during the message and during some of just this uh, prophetic time where I saw that there was somebody who had been in a car accident and so I called that out I said somebody is being healed right now you were in a car accident and then I went on and continued preaching the message. And then it was after the service that Ramon and I were just there, you know, kind of chatting with a few people afterwards that this man came forward. And he says, do you remember you said during the sermon that somebody had a car accident? And I said, um, oh yeah, you're right, I did say that. You know, it was one of those things where I was just in the flow of the Holy Spirit. And then I, I honestly like didn't even remember saying that until he brought it up again at the end of the service. And he said, as soon as you said that, I felt the power of God hit me. And then he said, uh, I felt like my insides were being stapled back together because he'd been in a very severe car accident. Um, he literally opened up his shirt and his, his whole chest was like cratered in with a lot of scars. And he said, the doctor said it was a total miracle that he even survived at all. And that he was supposed to go back in for different operations and other things that were out of order. And he just said, I, I just felt literally like God was stapling me back together as soon as you said that word, you know, so truly an amazing miracle. And um, the final night in SIPA Church at Pastor Irwin, and he's the president of, of a pastor's association, we saw about 30 to maybe 50 pastors come together in SLE, which was really amazing. Uh, I got to speak to them about the unity of the spirit. Uh, we had lunch together, it was, it was just a really blessed time. And then in the evening, I spoke at his church, and we were able to, um, give out candies and give out just some presents to a number of young kids, probably like 50 or 60 kids. Yeah. Uh, Ramon's daughter was there that night, so she really yeah. got to be blessed. Yeah. And I uh, got to preach the Word of God there as well. And, and we saw um, there was another man who he had a, uh, a, a fractured ankle or some mm -hmm. problem in his wow. right foot, and I had called that one out. The Lord showed me through the Word of Knowledge. And then he also came, came up to us at the end of the service and said that as soon as you said that, I felt something pop in my right leg and, and it's, it's totally healed now. So, uh, I mean, literally like there are many, many other miracles in, in each of those services that were just for the sake of time, not able to cover each one of them, but um, just wanted to give you all an update of what God did in Esteli. And I'm very excited that there was a real foundation laid there so that next time I come, you know, Lord willing in the next couple of years, when we come back to Nicaragua, we'll really have the support, the full support of a lot of churches and pastors and uh, you know the financial support from our backers in the US and around the world to um, 
hold a larger crusade where we really believe that we can reach five, ten thousand people a night. You know, they've they've done those types of events before in Esteli, but because of COVID, because of disunity among you know different groups and churches, I mean, I think it's been a, a while since they've had anything of that magnitude. So um, that's part of the plan for uh, future missions here in Nicaragua. And then after Esteli, we spent two days in Somolto, which is uh, Ramon's hometown. And everywhere we went, people were like, hey, teacher, oh, how you doing with that? You know, and so that was pretty fun. And, um, you know, there was a real spirit of fear kind of hovering over that whole area. You know, Somoto had been hit with, um, I guess, a spike in COVID cases more so than even other parts of Nicaragua. So everybody was, you know, masked up and really fearful. And the first night of the crusade, we didn't see very many people come out to the meeting. Um, but God just put a word in my heart, you know, 2 Timothy 1, seven that says, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Man. You know, and I really felt that that message, even though there weren't, there was probably only 50 or 80 people in the gymnasium that night, and we were expecting, you know, 500 or more. Um, most of them, obviously, that came were of the various churches. And I felt like this message was more for the church than anything, you know, that we can either listen to the media, we can allow fear to take hold of our hearts, or we can believe God. You know, the, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in us and will give life to our mortal bodies. You know, that, that Jesus is above COVID, he's above sickness, he's above disease. We've, we've seen so many miracles already on this trip that I felt like God had sent me there just to remind the church, why are you looking at the wind and the waves? Keep your eyes on Jesus. He's above the storm. He's able to command peace and stillness in the middle of the storm. And so I felt that there was actually a real shift after that first night. The very next morning, really early in the morning, there was like a thunderstorm and a rain shower that I felt was a prophetic sign from the Lord. Like he was kind of washing away uh, the dust, the dirt, the fear, just kind of giving, cleansing the land, giving a fresh start. And the second night, uh, we saw much greater attendance, probably, you know, almost, you know, 300, maybe 400 people came out that night, and a number of people gave their lives to Christ. We saw a number of miracles that night, and so, yeah, it was just a really um, amazing time in Samoto. And an unexpected blessing, I'm going to let Ramon share a little bit about this, is that we got a phone call from a woman who lives in Samoto. She heard that we were going to be in the area. It just so happens that she and her husband own a place called the Pan Americano Hotel, and she said, you know, we'd love to host you. You know, why don't you just come and stay here, uh, you know, free of charge. We're going to just, we want to bless you. Um, but we would also really appreciate if you could pray for, for me and for us because we're having some health challenges. So I'll let Ramon just share about that testimony. And then there was one more amazing testimony as we were leaving Samoto. So uh, the one of the woman, that's the only one I want to get sure now. Sure that and then the, the other one, the, the child. Okay, okay. So, yes, that was mind blowing in the first place. You know, she uh, knew that this that was coming, you know, to town, and that's remind me of Jesus. You know, when that woman with the issue of blood heard that Jesus was passing by, she uh, just reached out to him by faith, and that's what she and that's what she did. And also, she ended up giving her life to Jesus Christ because she was not even a believer, but she was believing that a man of God was coming and was passing by. And yeah, her her hotel is is shut down. It's no. Uh, offering the service, you know, so she decided to make uh, these three rooms for Zach, uh, the chauffeur, and, and I, my wife. And yes, um, the first night as we arrived in Sumatra, uh, Zach, you know, in the afternoon, you, before going to the crusade, he prayed for her. And literally, I saw, you know, and she was, she started crying and breaking into tears, breaking down with tears, because she said, you know, I feel like that fire, that heat going and running through all my body from top to head. And I was like, wow, you know, the power of the Lord, he is healing this woman here, not even wanting to accept the Lord Jesus, because Zach uh, preached and also witnessed the gospel of Jesus Christ and told her that eventually we all will die, because we can pray for you here, and God can heal you, and we all get glad. And she just, you know, stared to her, to her daughter who was next to her, and she kind of, you know, did not want to do that at first, but then... Zach prayed over her and I just activated my face even the most, you know, for the crusade that was just soon going to happen afterwards. And she started crying, that just touched me so much. And yeah, she started to move her body and for 
she had this just this you know uh, uh, cluster of pains and, and, and ailments all over her body and she could barely could move and walk and she had this 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 uh, sling around her her, her her head and Zach just told her we moved that and just by faith even removed your face mask so she was so fearful and the spirit of fear I just you know literally could feel how it just went away from her and she started to move and healing just took place there right on the spot and wow I was so 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 amazing you know she was so happy and we were all so happy obviously seeing the love of Jesus you know reaching this woman and yeah then this other miracle you know that just was mind-blowing they she uh, had this guy working for her there at the hotel and he has uh, a son maybe a year old and she was told him go bring your son because she knew that he was sick or he might have told her you know we know that this man of God is here why don't you ask him to pray for my son and he just you know brought him with her with 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 the uncle of the son of, of his son and she the, the aunt sorry the aunt and she they, they came in the hotel and yeah the problem was that one foot was shorter than the altar and he it was very painful for him too because he barely could you know uh, touch his foot and he would start crying and it was lame because of one foot was longer than the other and Zach just said okay now sit he sits his father there sitting on, on your lap and he started praying right there on my eyes you know I saw this creative miracle his legs started to grow and to level up with the other foot and my wife was re was recording I mean was taking the video and I just told her come closer and you know to capture this very wonderful moment that Lord is just doing this child and my wife was you know broke in tears there she couldn't she, she couldn't even move and I was like come on just do this right now but when I looked her in the eyes I saw these tears coming down I was oh yeah I know that the power was so tangible there you know man so tactile and yeah those you know I just felt that refresh refreshment in the Lord and that joy that that peace that surpasses you know everything every understanding and knowledge and whatever the doctor might have said that, you know that's a miracle right there on my eyes and yes thank you Lord um, yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, truly amazing. We were literally leaving the hotel on um, the morning, you know, as we were getting ready to leave from Samolto to head back down uh, towards Managua. And um, yeah, this family just showed up. It, it's like somehow, as Ramona already shared, you know, they heard that we were there and, and they were just so hungry, so in need of a miracle. I mean, you know, that I just, I mean, how could I not? pray for them you know I mean we were kind of like ready to go but I'm just like no we just need to stop and you know I think there's such a lesson there you know that our hunger and our faith um, really pulls on the anointing of God you know God is compassionate God wants to heal God wants to save God wants to deliver and you see that all throughout the Gospels you know whenever people came to Jesus even though he was on his way to do something different like the woman with the issue of blood you know she said I I believe that there's something for me and she went after it you know and so I feel like we saw that um, numerous times actually on this on this journey and uh, so yeah just absolutely mind-blowing uh, amazing miracles that the Holy Spirit was doing and yeah and, and, and we spent one night in Aquatal uh, I got to see my good friend Pastor Medardo uh, he but we only got to see him for one day he had been a part of the last two trips in both 2013 and 16 but this time around he wasn't able to join because his his family's been dealing with a lot of very serious health problems his son was in a major accident and um, his wife had come down with covid like a few weeks ago and was incredibly sick and so uh, it was just good though to get to spend one day there uh, i spoke at a church in aquatal and as, as Ramon and I were discussing earlier, it kind of felt like the victory lap, you know? We'd already seen God do so many miracles. I knew this was the last night that I was gonna be mm -hmm. speaking in Nicaragua, and there was just such a flow of the Holy Spirit. You know, I preached kind of the signature message for this, uh, this whole mission, which is Matthew 16, 18, where Jesus says, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And we saw two people come forward at the end of that service to really, really give their lives to Christ. I mean, these guys were making a genuine confession yeah. of faith. And, um, you know, I, I know that there were a number of people that got healed as well that night. So, uh, yeah, it was just a beautiful time. Um, what else can I say? I mean, we, uh, we, did, uh, we did, after all the ministry, we spent one day in Esteli getting to um, 
just kind of relax a little bit. We went out to this waterfall where there's kind of a nice swimming area and just got to do some swimming together and that was just a, a beautiful highlight as well. So um, we just wanted to encourage your faith and again just say thank you for those of you who have followed this mission, those who have prayed and interceded for me, for souls, for everything that God has done on this mission, uh, those of you who have given. Uh, it has not been in vain. I mean it's difficult to quantify the exact number of people who have given their lives to Christ. I mean, um, easily, you know, 30, 40, 50 miracles of various healings took place. And um, I want to say at least 40 or 50 people gave their lives to Christ as well, that we, that we could kind of see that either came forward or made a public profession of faith through raising their hand or standing when I gave that altar call at various meetings. But um, a number of people would come up afterwards, like I have a pastor friend who told me, he said, you know, uh, I got all these reports after you ministered at our church. People came up to me and said, Pastor, you know, I just want to let you know I received the Lord when Zach gave the altar call, um, but I, I just didn't want to come to the front, you know. And so in this culture, um, I've just noticed that it seems much harder for some reason, you know, whether it's the peer pressure or people feel awkward or something, uh, making that initial public confession but um, so heaven alone will tell exactly how many exactly how many people did give their lives to the Lord but I, I would say conservatively you know we could 40 or 50 people at least that we know of um, and, and that's not even including the television I mean we had the opportunity this trip to be on TV literally five times we the first time we arrived in Managua we were on JBN when we got to come up uh, we had two opportunities to speak television there and then a radio station in was it in Esteli? Yeah. A radio station in Esteli and then literally just earlier today uh, at the end of our journey we were able to visit JVN again here in Managua and just really give them pretty much the same report that we're giving you now just about the amazing things that Jesus did on this mission so um, we just want to pray that you are encouraged obviously um, this is the end of the Nicaragua portion. I will be then flying to Honduras tomorrow. I'll have a day or two to rest up, and then I'll be joined by my fellow evangelist, Andrew Mutana, for another two weeks of ministry there, and I'm sure we'll have plenty more awesome stories to share with you. Um, but I also want to just say thank you so much. It's been an honor and a privilege to work with Ramon Garcia. Uh, his wife, Magdalena, came along, and she was an incredible help with the media, the video, praying. Uh, she was very good with helping track expenses and a number of other things that we needed done on this trip so I love you Magdalena thank you so much for everything that you did as well uh, and thank you really to all of the pastors here in Nicaragua Pastor Silvio, Pastor Ulysses, Irwin, Pastor Ramon and Samoto uh, and so many others you know there were uh, in every place we went to this wouldn't have been possible without others on the ground praying and helping to prepare so uh, thank you for that and we just pray you were encouraged in your faith. You know, I believe there was an impartation in this nation, uh, not just of healing and salvation, but the church was stirred up. Uh, Ramon just gave me a report today that there were a couple of pastors from Samoto, his hometown, oh, yeah. that after the, the crusade, after the meetings, they decided, you know, we're not going to let fear, we're not going to let the, you know, possibility that somebody could get sick from COVID stop us from doing the work of the Lord. And they were going out to various parts of Samoto then and preaching the gospel. Yeah, with a speaker and a stand. Or, so know, I mean that just make, that makes me so happy you know that the church is being activated that the church that was one of our prayers you know that the church would be built up on this trip uh, they would be unified they would be strengthened that more souls would be added that they would receive an impartation from the Holy Spirit and that happened so um, praise Jesus Gloria a Dios por todo and uh, Ramon, why don't you just say a closing prayer for everybody watching this video as we just rejoice together at all these things that God did. Okay. Um, thank you, precious Lord Jesus, for all that took place in this mission, Lord, and for that deposit of the miracles and healing and miraculous healing, Lord, and the preaching of the gospel, Father. Thank you, Lord, for all those pastors whose lives were touched, Lord, and for those healings and for everything, Father. And Jesus, we give you all the honor, the praise, and we ask, Lord, that you continue, Lord, blessing those who saw into this ministry, Lord, because you have done wonderful things, Lord, and mighty things. And me personally, Lord, 
has my 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 life has been changed, Lord. My marriage has been, Lord, built up in you, Father. And I know that many people, even those who watched uh, television, Lord, that their lives were transformed. And I don't know how many of them are, are Lord. I believe thousands of them, Father, were restored into their emotional healings as well, Father. So, Lord Jesus, I just want to give you all the thanks for those people who. Lord, put their their, their grain, their, their grain, Lord, on this, Father. May you bless them, Lord, more that they would, Lord, continue doing your your will, Lord, continue doing that which is pleasing to you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for everything. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. God bless you. Adios. Adios.